Oh, hey, um, does anybody want to buy an antique? Oh, this thing is huge and pretty awkward. But it's a beast and it works really well. This is the 5K iMac 27 inch 2014 and I still use it. Anyway, love that little machine. So Apple, instead of updating the 27 inch iMac, that's my favorite machine of all time, I'd say, so far. Instead of just putting an M1 Max or an M1 Ultra chip in there, you decide to cancel it altogether? Nowadays, if you wanna go to the Apple website and you click on Mac, you'll notice that we have iMac 24 inch here and there is no iMac 27 inch. There's the Mac Mini and Mac Studio, no 27 inch. But a few days ago, there was. Here's what we had on offer. We had uh, Intel, 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 all 10th generation Intel processors, and they were pretty pricey. After configuration, these machines added up to quite a bit. And these are not even the iMac Pros. These are just the regular iMacs. What do you folks think? Is it a good move on Apple's part or not? Here's what I think Apple will get out of it. They're on their way to completing the transition from Intel over to Apple Silicon, and they're very close to their goal of doing this in two years. At WWDC in 2020, they said it was gonna take them two years. They're very close. So what they've done here is they've chopped one of the products that was gonna get an upgrade. Well, maybe it was never gonna get an upgrade, but it was one of the ones that was standing between them and the goal of getting everything transferred over. They just got rid of it. As a side note, they do have only one device left to upgrade and that's the Mac Pro. And they have to do it by WWDC 22. So I'm not gonna be starting any rumors, but maybe that's when they'll announce the Mac Pro with the new Apple Silicon chip. What are they gonna call it? M1 Ultimate, M1 Uber? You heard it here first, folks, all right? <laughs> Second benefit to Apple is they'll be able to sell more units, just units of things. Uh, because the Mac Studio will come in at a lower price point than some of the higher end 27 inch iMacs. And folks can pick and choose their own monitor. I for one already have two LG monitors that I use here. I currently use them with my MacBook Pro, kind of in a closed state, but I'll use them with the Mac Studio when I get that in here. By the way, if you wanna see my videos comparing the M1 Ultra to the M1 Max and the M Studio with the MacBook Pros, subscribe please and I'd appreciate a like, thank you. Now later on, if I ever decide that I wanna upgrade my monitors, I might even consider Apple's new display. And that's yet another product that they could sell me. So yeah, it works for Apple pretty well. What about the consumers? From the consumer point of view, especially uh, maybe the professional consumers uh, point of view, the new direction is just a return to the status quo. Sure, it's not fun and quirky design of a machine that Apple has been known to make during Johnny Ive's time, but we already have the 24 inch iMac to fill that need in the folks that wanna have that special quirky multicolored machine. And for those that demand more performance and power, they wanna control their own peripherals, now there's the Mac Studio. I think it's a good move for Apple's business and it's also a good move for consumers as well. Oh. As much as I love my iMac, I love using it. I don't like transporting it, and I secretly would have preferred if I can get the same performance over the last few years without this cumbersome shape. I've moved a lot over the years, and uh, that thing was never fun to move. Anyway, a quick video today, just wanted to share what I think about this transition away from the iMac 27 inch and to a more conservative approach to computing for Apple. Thanks a lot folks, stay tuned for more videos. Later.